I yeah. barely ever only trim on one side. I usually just really? all trim. Is that, is, is that a lifestyle <laughs> choice? <laughs> Welcome back to the HTTP 203 World Cup of Web Features 2018. Oh, you're bringing the enthusiasm yeah. back. Yeah. That's really good. This is, this is the episode where we find out who wins. Yes, it is. Because in, in, in the previous few episodes, we figured out one finalist. Um, do we reveal that now, or should we just no, see No, because I've forgotten, and I want to keep it that way so I don't incorporate it into my decision. That's, that's, the that's other good ones. thinking. But we did, in the last episode, figure out the other semi finalist, which is yes. the page. Life, page Lifecycle API. API. Yes, correct. Right. Why do you just keep the word page? It's part of the API name, isn't it? I'll just keep just, just makes it quick. I'm going to try using that tactic of argument uh, in in this next <laughs> phase as well. <laughs> oh, OK. Trim start trim end. I, once again, the font is making it almost okay. illegible. Um, I feel like, is that a, yeah, OK, okay let it explain it to me and I'll. Trim? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Remove them spaces at start and end. Trim left, trim right. See, I thought that was already left and right, so I wondered if you typoed trim. Non standard. Oh. But in pretty much all browsers, I think, except Edge. OK. Trim start, trim end. So, there you go. So, so here's a question then, though. Mm. Does trim start behave differently nope. in right to oh. left languages? Oh, in RTL. I was wondering that. Um, but because there's no language applied to a JavaScript environment, yes, in a web environment, but not in a JavaScript environment, which mm. this is, I'm pretty sure there is absolutely no difference. So we're calling um, it trim start, trim end, because we already have trim left, trim right, but that's not standard. So uh, And we have pad start and pad end. And it's basically to make, are you OK? Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so that's it. And you know, scanning my notes, uh, yes, this is now in everything except Edge, but it has landed in Chakra. So it would it's likely to be in the next version of Edge. Um, All right. Uh, going up against that is import.meta. Right. So um, import.meta is basically an object where you have metadata about the module that you're currently in. OK. And I think the only thing that's on there right now is the URL property. And that's more or less equivalent to what document.currentscript.source used to be. Right. The thing you can't use that is because if you have so document.current script gives you the script tag of the that's included in the, the document. Yeah. yeah that's right. currently running. Right. Now the problem is that an import or that a JavaScript module can have an import. And so that doesn't have a script tag. So what is current script supposed to be? So it's giving you the URL of the current script, not not Exactly. Not and that element, is super different. important if you think about um, if you want to do some path mangling for dynamic imports or any yes. kind of like module loader, or maybe just do relative path resolution, all these things. But it's sort of a uh, DIR name thing that you have yeah. in Node. Like, exactly similar. that, okay. that okay. kind of thing. Um, okay. So it's it's a simple feature, but it's actually quite, quite powerful and useful. All right. Um, so it feels like we had two quite small, simple features there. Well, that's right? a, it's a nice change. So. Yeah, some of them have been bigger. So it feels like we could probably make a decision reasonably quickly. Uh, but then I. So trim start, trim end doesn't feel that new because we already have it. And also, I yeah. barely ever only trim on one side. I usually just really? all trim. Is that, is, is that a lifestyle <laughs> choice? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I usually, go, <laughs> I usually trim all the way. I am going to vote for uh, pretty the same reasons as you, uh, import meta. Yeah, it's, it's more of a feature. It's a, it is a new thing. And it's actually it's just currently really painful once you run into the problem that um, it's not supported in all browsers. And yep. you can't send it, but modules are, but import.meta is not. And it's sometimes really annoying. Sold. There we go, import.meta. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, introduce the next feature, which is this is a lot of letters. Um, BegX? RegX. See, see the <laughs> font is terrible. It looks like BegX. Uh, BegX named capture groups. Yeah. yeah. I, I know these. Um, ah, see, yeah. I, I, I'd heard of them. I'd never actually looked at the syntax. But it is just this. You, you, you know. I find RegX to be write only. Yeah, it's executable line noise. Like it's, yeah. Once you've written them, it's absolutely you write impossible some, you to write know some what it was. And you go, one, two, three. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> I knew it a second ago. I now don't. Um, but being able to do this, like name groups like this, and then so result.groups, you get the, yeah. the stuff out. Brilliant. Before that, you only had a numbered array, and it would be completely unclear to exactly. what you were doing. And another place that would be unclear is when you're using string.replace. Oh, yeah. But Brilliant. you can use the group names there as well. So in this example, I'm changing it from being year, month, day to day, month, year. 
And because month day year is absolutely nonsensical and should not be used. Agreed. Yes, two people, uh, European. There we go. <laughs> we absolutely think that. Um, so More yeah, on that next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we've been proven to be non-trustworthy when it comes to uh, dating. OK, fair enough. Uh, dating, it's not what I meant, <laughs> but still also true. <laughs> true. <laughs> All right, going up against okay. uh, regex named capture groups. Yep. Well, I did that right. Um, is relative time format. We're going, well, I mean, the other thing wasn't strictly to do with dates, but, but we're still sticking with we're that We're sticking in, in, yeah, in that territory. This All is right. basically moments JS on a platform. Oh. It's, 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 yeah, we, we got it. So you can basically create a relative time format instance that is localized. So in this case, I'm using English because you know we've been mostly speaking English. We, I could have, have done German, but I didn't. OK. Also, because Thank I you. mostly copy pasted and I was too lazy to actually generate a German one. Yep. Um, yeah, you just pass in, here's a number, here's the unit. It will give you that as a localized oh. string. And there's obviously many more options if you want to have like an, a full breakdown or just the highest Object. If, if you want to have okay. like four months, three days, and two hours ago, or if you want to just have one of them, um, if you want to have it more numeric or spelled out as words, all these options are there. But basically, moment just on the platform. It's a big dependency that you can hopefully ditch now. Well, I oh, I mean, I felt like it was going to be an easy one, mm. but now I'm less sure. I. Things like moment.js are one of the things that leads to quite big bundle sizes. Because yeah. you end up with these large libraries in for. Yeah, especially if you like, don't screen check and they have like, all the localizations still in there. And, right. You know? So having that just on the platform, that feels like a huge win. The regex thing is really useful for the readability of yeah. regex. But how often do you use regex? I know Jason lives off of regex. Uh, yes, uh, you mean our colleague Jason. Jason Miller, yeah. Because it sounds like you were talking about the web standard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jason. Jason. Jason lives off regex. It's like you knew you should not parse your Jason with no, regex. No, it turns out but you can't parse languages with regex. No, I meant, I meant Jason Miller, who um, does all kinds of minification yeah. and mini code, mini micro library magic. With and it's regex. often because regex. But I'm, I'm going to say the relative time thing. Yeah, it's I agree. Just, I, I, it's, it's one of the first bits of Intel that I'm really, really happy with, I'd say. Yeah. Like that some, some of it I found it it's, to be. It's a well-designed API, it seems. Yes. I think there's still some things that could be even better, but you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut my losses here. It's a good API. Yeah, it is something that you could legitimately replace moment with. So. Yeah. Um, and, and look, we have, we have a, a, a new thing to decide. So import meta relative time format. I'm going to go with relative time format. Oh, you're less sure. I'm trying to, subjectively, the, I've run more often into import.meta when writing stuff than into relative time format. That being said, pretty much a lot of apps need the relative time format. Many apps probably don't need import.meta. So yeah. in terms of the average developer, I'm going yeah, to type with you. I, I, RTF I think is the, the bigger, big hitter here. The, the, yeah, the wins for, for the web by reducing the, those model sizes feels bigger. That is import.meta you could probably work around in a lot of cases. I, um, I, 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 there's probably like a Babel plugin or something the, that does it. Very, very possibly, very possibly. Right, OK. Yeah, there right. you go. So we, were, we got relative time formats uh, through to the next stage. But now I want to talk about resize observer. I like and I've, I've got a feeling. This might go far in this contest because I. That's because I wrote the article on it. You did write the article <laughs> on it, and that's a, it's it's a really good article as well, and it's such a, an amazing feature. I think it's also quite simple. It is also it is also quite simple. I would say it, it's it's yeah. It, you give it an element, and it will tell you when it changes size. Yeah. Some of the complexities in how it handles recursive changes, like it yeah. will only only if it's sort of things inside that element that are changing. Yeah. But most of the time, that is something you shouldn't be running into. If you, but yeah. Most you just say this is a resize event for elements rather than just the window. Absolutely. And, you know, and 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 that you can build like element queries. I think they're called on top of this. All these things. That's, that's great. that that for me is a selling point. It's it's the element. Uh, containing the query stuff that we've been yeah. wanting for ages. So okay, what let's you see who to has table? to beat the resize observer. Yeah, it's look. audio worklet. Oh. oh, okay. So another worklet. The worklets are coming to the platform. Yes, um, the year of the worklets. So a little bit of catch up. Um, usually, when you do audio, you create an audio context, and then you can create notes and connect them. So in this case, I'm creating a track note from an audio element. 
Then I'm creating a gain node, which allows me to adjust the gain. How much louder or quieter do I want this audio to become? Right. And a panner, do I want it on the left speaker, the right speaker, somewhere in the middle? Okay. And then I connect these nodes. Like it's like a little data flow model. It, it's very similar to what you would do in an audio system where you're you're plugging and things into each other, like different processes. The reason processes. it's written this way is because all of this is running in a different thread. Uh, so all of the course. all this data mangling is happening on a different thread because it's it, audio has to be usually super low latency. Latency is one of the biggest factors when you do audio work. It's, it's kind of declarative. Yeah. In, in, yeah. Um, yeah. But then people are like, well, I kind of want to manipulate the buffers myself. I want to get an audio buffer and do some math myself. Right. And they were looking at it like, do I do do we do events? But events are async by default, so it gets really hard with the real timeness. And now worklets are a primitive that actually gives a solution because now you can do oh, your I own see. node. So this is the same code, but now there is a serm node. Oh, oh. And the serm node is basically an audio worklet node, and it takes a name. And then in a different file we, uh, that we loaded up here, I can I extend see. audio worklet processor, which is the basic node, uh, and create my own one. And just in there, I'll have access to my inputs, which is an array of buffers. And I can define what is in the outputs. Right, because there is there are ways to do this sort of processing on the main thread. Uh, I think it's now a deprecated API because you run yeah. into all of this. The asyncness and the yeah, all the real timeness yeah. problems. And it adds latency with the thread hops in as well because audio is already a different thread, but now you have to jump back to main thread. It gets unwieldy. And the worklets can just be migrated to different thread, run on the same thread. You can still uh, maintain the same declarative API and allow Basically, now to, to have DSP plugins on the web, all the effects that people do can now just be ported to an audio worklet. That's, that's nice. That is nice, actually. Um, but, 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 it's not Resize Observer, though, is it? It's not. It's Audio is still pretty. It, it's just a niche use case. Like in general, yep. audio is actually kind of frowned upon on the web. And in apps in general, like things just start playing audio are bad. That's and, true. And, and there is audio apps, and those are great. I'm really impressed with how far people get, but the audience that can use these, fairly small. Yeah, the little bits of audio stuff I've done on the web, I've, I've really enjoyed. Yeah. I had loads of fun with it. But it is, I've only done it like once or twice. Big Web Quiz, the first time was one of them, right? Yeah, yeah that actually might be the only one. <laughs> I, and I did a little bit of extra stuff after that, but it was, it was, it was mostly like that. Resource Observer, Observer, Observer is just I, I so want good. that in every browser like today. Please, so I can you know do that sort of stuff. Have the uh, you know, container queries yeah. sort of thing. Stop just attaching because what we do right now is we attach a, a resize us into the window, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you know that's not yeah. going to catch all the cases. No, and then you call get on in client rack and it becomes a performance foot gun. It's so hard to do right. Exactly, exactly. Right. So that goes through to the next uh, stage, and now we are coming on to the final two features that we're going to talk yeah. about. I am going to talk about cache mode. Uh, on on fetch. Yes. So this is part of request objects. Because it's part of a request object, you always get mm -hmm. it as this second parameter of, of fetch as well. Yeah. Uh, and what you're essentially doing is is saying how this request should go through the cache, if at all. So with reload, I'm saying on the way out, ignore the cache. Mm -hmm. But on the way back, it can go into the cache. Oh, you have control over both paths. Yes. Yes, pathers. No, pathers. Yes. no, no. You say pathers. <laughs> Why not? It's Christmas. <laughs> Treat yourself. Treat yourself to some new words that you just made up. That's fine. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but, but this is a good. Like if you know if you know there's a more up to date version, but you but it's the user d has has a one in the cache. That's yeah. yeah <laughs> you have one in the cache. Yeah, mate. I just. <laughs> <laughs> What's in this? Uh, <laughs> they, yes, so you, you can bypass the the cache one. So that you basically, out no store would then be on the way out. It can hit the cache. Uh, or probably no, not. No store behaves as if the cache isn't doesn't exist. Okay. So it bypasses the cache both ways. And no cache. Uh, ever... Yeah, not that I'm reading this off a piece of paper. <laughs> um, it will uh, even if there's uh, if there's an item that is fresh in the cache, it bypasses it, but it will still do mm. a revalidate. Fresh in the cache. Fresh in the cache. Yeah, so, all right, cool. OK. Uh, force cache means it, if so there's something. Basically, the stuff that's on doing the cache busting thing where we put like random query things, amongst other things. But, but with force cache, it means that you could take the item in the cache even if it's stale, according yeah. to like max age. And only if cached means. And also don't hit the network at all, right? With well, force, force cache will still hit the network only if cached will not. Interesting. That's it. Uh, and Lots of control. I like it. Yeah. Only if cached, it has to be same origin. That is the feature. All right, going up against that is class fields. Oh. Um, oh ho, ho. Yeah. So it's, it's I don't know a lot about this, so I'm It's it's pretty simple. It's it's this. 
OK. It's, so, so far, which, so one, one. So this doesn't include the private? No, but like, it will basically numbers. build on top of it. So once the, this is landed in Chrome, the private ones are the names that start with a, with a hash. hash. Hashtag. Hash. But yes, um, and those will now. only be accessible from within the function, uh, from the, okay. within the class, not from outside. Um, this is pretty much just sugar over, I guess, over getters and static getters. But the biggest beneficiary would, for example, be custom elements because you have the observed right. attributes field that always has to be a static Getter. getter function. And now it could just be a proper static attribute, and it just looks nice, and it's easier to read what's going on. What about the instance ones? That's so. Is that where do they happen in relation to the constructor? Do you know? I do not know. I'm assuming okay. it runs before the constructor. Before, I think that's what after, after the super constructor, but before your own constructor. I think that's what TypeScript does. So yes. that would make sense. Yeah. I think. I Maybe. Think. Who Probably. knows? Maybe. Right. Okay. So that, that means away with the slides. Away with the and slides. And in with the bracket. This this is it. Um. So OK, one of the things that is pushing me towards the cache mode is that it's actually capability, right? Well, the class fields is a, yeah, class fields is sugar, and it's also sugar that I write a lot of TypeScript these days. Yeah. So I just I already have it. Yeah, yeah, I and get it. I get I'm it. I'm glad that it's coming to JavaScript proper, and I'm but I'm more excited about the private instance uh, properties. True. True. And and the things of like oh well they could be munged. In code mm. minification, yeah. because it, they're private. Yeah, they're private. So I'm more excited about that. So I'd be tempted to put cache mode through. I haven't run into the problem with cache mode very often, I have to say, where I wanted to have control over how the fetch is being handled. That being said, I think it's a very because it, the GitHub case is that yeah. you've updated your service worker. You want to get the freshest version yeah. of these things, and you've been, you're not in control of GitHub's yeah, headers. Yeah, I guess I, um, I mostly happened when I was inside my server. But yeah, I, I agree. It's, what, it's what I would say is anything we pick now, I'm going to be voting Resize Observer in the next thing. <laughs> Both of these lose against Resize Observer. So well, go on. I'll let you pick. What, what do you want to put through? Let's put cache mode through. I agree. Right. It's an actual capability that was missing while class fields. We had a workaround for years. It's been fine. Yes, um, it's absolutely. It's nice. It's nice. Yes. So next bit. We already said it. I, I, yeah. Yeah, you agree? Yeah, I oh, agree. Oh, we're going to rattle through these. Yeah, I just think Resize Observer, like the amount of pro, like stuff that solves is, is is amazing. Yeah, so Resize Observer, the amount of stuff that you can do with it. Yeah, it's it, very it, versatile. It, yeah, it, sol it solves just a, such a long standing problem. Um, so now. Now we're getting to the interesting bits. Yeah, so what have we got here? Relative time format and Resize Observer. It's still Resize Observer for me. I, yeah, I agree. It's I agree. The amount of times that I've wanted Resize Observer in the past, it, it's loads. Yeah. It's loads. <laughs> the, That's, uh, probably the physical four, unit, five. <laughs> the physical unit is loads. <laughs> it's loads, yeah. <laughs> yeah, loads times two, I would say. Uh, so let's put Resize Observer through uh, to the next round, and we'll see where that leaves us. Here we go. Um, now we're getting, oh. that's a rough one. Now, yeah, I could have predicted this. The thing is, it, this, the, the interesting, there's a commonality here that these both solve long-standing problems. Yeah. The, the tab discarding thing has existed since mobile, and there's only now a solution to it. The resize observer, you could sort of equally say that this has been a problem since mobile as well, because that yeah. whole responsive thing exactly. really came into to be. I'm going to be honest. I feel like lifecycle API is more workaroundable than Resize Observer. Yes, because you could put stuff in you have session so storage. On Blur could. has been there for a long time. And you have IDB, you have local storage, you have means to persist state locally. Yes. Um, so you could have done the right thing for a long, long time now. And this is just a cherry on top for you. While yeah. Resize Observer, you had to go to get bonding client direct and other awful things. I'm, I'm pressing the button uh, because I absolutely agree with you. And I think I now remember, this is our second finalist, if I remember correctly. Oh. Um, and I think I remember now who our other finalist is. And that means we have one CSS feature and one JavaScript feature in our finals, which I think is amazing. That is exciting. Oh, you're right. Yes, I had forgotten about it. So, uh, <laughs> so this <laughs> is. It's kind of horrible that like, with the amount of work that's gone into these features and the, the diversity of the features that we now have to just declare one the best <laughs> arbitrarily <laughs> based on just some loose opinions okay. while wearing a ridiculous jumper. 
We How? should. We feel like <laughs> is that going in your ear every time? <laughs> Brilliant, excellent. Um, you start or should I? Well, it feels like we we have to summarize scroll snap again because no, we, I think we should link back to the video. You just want another view. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Excellent. Watch okay. the video if you don't know what scroll snap is about. So we've got the. Uh, I am going to show the demo again. Why not? Uh, it's it's a it's a tab we've got here. I, I now remember. So this is scroll snap. This is isn't it great? It's it's not the best demo anyone's <laughs> ever made. It it's, might be a slightly underwhelming demo now that I think about it. <laughs> but if this loses, then whoever made this demo is going to feel pretty terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is like having a sort of page paginated system. Yeah. Within your scrolling. And you see it on the mobile UIs, right? Where you have, you swipe between individual panels, and you just want them to lock into view. Yes. But you don't want to reinvent the wheel. It would, Idea to just use a scroller and just let the rest be handled by the operating system. Yeah, and it's um, nice that it's in CSS, so it's super smooth. It's bringing uh, something that is composited scrolling. Composited scrolling is a very native feeling feature. Yeah, because the browser um, or even the browser might uh, yield to the operating system. Mm. So and this isn't even something that animation workload is going to solve, right? Because animation it used to it doesn't anymore. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, we used to chance. want it to solve it, but actually, you, you actually can in a way, but it's quite hacky. You can still if so. You if would you have don't to have a like container, and then yeah, you sort of if you fake don't it like how scroll snap works, animation workload is your SKA patch. Okay. Um, okay. It's not as easy as it used to be, but honestly, scroll snap mm. covers the ninety-five percentile. I would say. All right. So, and I think that's where my argument lies. Uh, both of these are they solve long-standing problems. Incredibly powerful tools. Big problems have been around for a long time. So, the resize observer. There's more types of UI that it solves a problem for. Yeah, like there, I can. There, there are definitely cases I use scroll snap. Like the, the two cases we mentioned, like ha having a carousel, which is yeah. sort of the, the example we're looking at, and like having those sort of like, yeah, paged UI yeah. Uh, things, which I have written that in JavaScript. It's incredibly hard, and it's still a bit janky and slow. Resize Observer. Once that's in all browsers, I feel like I'm gonna ha have like. Five elements on a page, all doing react, having their resize observer, yeah. doing different things, uh, applying class names. It's just really difficult for, for me. My argument here is going to be so the amount of code that Scroll Snap allows me to not write just outweighs what resize observer allows oh, me. Oh, that's say. a really that's a really compelling argument. Actually, I like that because the, did you if you write scroll snap yourself in JavaScript, it's on the main thread. You have to yep. do the physics things. Yep. Um, it, it's going to be different from, for example, Android to iOS. They feel different when they scroll, and you yep. either going to be an uncanny valley, or you have to have two implementations that emulate both perfectly. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of code. It's very hard to get right. For me, it's scroll snap. And but then the. Extensible web person within me is looking at two features here. One is a high-level feature yeah. that I can't really hook into, and the other is a, a very much a primitive. But that being and said, just, extensible web doesn't say they should not be high-level features. Not, they not, should just be built in the. They should just be taken out of exposing low levels first, and then see the popular patterns, and then providing easier ways for those. And if we were talking about an animation worklet where you can control mm. scroll yeah. position in this way. I, I, that feels like the next step so up. That's, this that, is, this that's is a big the, step up. That's the big asterisk in, about the animation worker story here, where you can't really control pro, uh, scroll position anymore. You used to, but that's been removed from the spec. But you can still achieve the same visual effect yeah. by snapping into view. So it, it is an escape hatch for and this. Resize Observer, we can. you've got the window resize listener. You could uh, infer stuff in other ways, I guess. It, yeah. It's difficult code. Worst comes to worst, you could have a RAF um, that's checking yeah. layout. Uh, I mean, um, usually you know your breakpoints in, in your CSS breakpoints. So you could actually avoid the get bonding claim if you yeah, do it right. It's a lot of hard work. Now. Um, it's, yeah. it's difficult to make modules like that, modules and components yeah. like that, but uh, absolutely this. So is it settled? Uh, I, 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 th I think I agree. I think scroll snap. Yeah. It is it, it just how smoothly it does it. And although it's not. Something I'm going to be necessarily using on every page, as you say, it's it's m a much bigger step in the right direction from how we were doing it today. Yeah. Versus resize observer, which is still a massive step. Um, so with I, that, our HTTP 203 World Feature Championship 2018 thing renderer is going to be scroll snap. Scroll snap. It's scroll snap. It is scroll snap. There he wins the the orange carrot. I of was. 
<laughs> I was going to ask what they win, and I was thinking it was nothing <laughs> because our opinion is essentially meaningless, other than <laughs> just what we like. It's but they literally we're going to send them the glittery carrot of of the 2008 glittery yeah. carrot award. I like it. We should do it next year. Until next year. Until next year. Well done, Scroll Snap. Um, I'm vamping for time because this is saying internal server error. <laughs> Um, let, let me try, let me try this again. I really want to go to the pub. <laughs> yes! Yes, okay. That's okay, it's working, we're back in. <laughs>